now we just need an efficiency pick. And I think I locked you in, didn't I? Yes, I did. So we need another bookcase. Take down this and this and this and this. Grab the last bucket of lava, put it back down. Break this. Put the cauldrons in here. You're now a jobless villager. And now we just gotta go choppy choppy. I actually hate this mechanic. It's gonna be controversial, but I'll tell you that I think the future villager experimental tra uh, changes where you go to a biome and bring them back, I think that is more fun than this. This sucks. Like, rolling for efficiency like this is just awful. And yes, I know there are cheaty packs that you can use that are exploiting bugs in the game. I don't like them. I know I have packs that are considered cheaty by some people, but I don't like that one. It goes too far. So this is what we're stuck with. And I could make a piston, but I don't have a uh, slime ball. If the wandering trader had a slime ball, I would have bought it. All right, I gave up on not doing this with pistons because I hate this so much. Just broken buttons. You know what? We're gonna do. Do I have slabs on me? Do that, and then go up here. Push your button there and a button there. Put emeralds in my hand so I can see what he has. You telling me that this is fun? Just, just, just getting bookshelves over and over and over again. Just give me efficiency so we can be done with this, bud. Efficiency one? Come on. I can't do efficiency one. Blast three. Okay, I need efficiency four or efficiency five. That's what I need. Mending for 20. I really need either mending for like 14 and I'll lock you in or efficiency. Feather falling four. That would be nice, but I, I really need efficiency. That's what I need. Sharpness five. Oh, come on. Why can't that be an efficiency book? Efficiency three. I need efficiency four if it's going to be that price. Mending for 12. We're going to take that one though. New wandering trader, please have some slime. Nope, but I will buy the red sand. And you can take all my emeralds. And then I need to make another bookshelf and another lectern. And then we gotta move this set up. So we're gonna take this down. Put it right there, maybe. Take yours away. I think that's yours. Whose is that one? Yep, that's yours. Frostwalker. All right, let's see. Do I got another slab here? Who says this is a good mechanic? Because uh, you can come roll these villagers for me. Just tell me that this is the most fun gameplay you've ever had. Just pushing buttons and rolling villagers. God, I hate this. I would rather wrangle a villager thousands of blocks than deal with this. At least there's some entertainment in moving a villager thousands of blocks. Go through the nether, have a little fun, lose a couple of villagers. You know, it can be entertaining. This, not entertaining. This is just grinding and boring. I've gotten like 20 Curse of Vanishings. I've probably gotten 15 Loyalty Ones or something like that. No, I didn't mean to lock you. Who is becoming a librarian? Who's sparkly? Oh, it's you. Oh, this is going to be a great time, everyone. Oh, exactly the person I wanted to get the job. So we'll put a job block there. I have to put a piston down here somewhere. A piston there. Button push. Now don't roll bookshelves for forever. Yep, this is the best mechanic, you know. Definitely don't want to change this. Such exhilarating gameplay. 
Efficiency four for 52 after an hour of rolling. That's gonna be what we get. Except for I need an emerald. Okay, now we need an anvil. We got one over here. And I actually don't want silk on. We'll just put silk on it for now. I always make another one later. Silk touch. Efficiency four. All right, now they're still expensive, but can I do this now? Yeah, that's much faster for making cobble and stone. So we're gonna sit at this for a little while and see what's up. Okay, let's talk about where we're at. So I've switched all of the oak out for birch and I've been doing some obsidian farming, which just is, you know, get obsidian via this method and then chop it down with your whichever pickaxe you like. I have got almost a stack of obsidian so far. I haven't been focusing on obsidian farming much. 51 obsidian, so that's pretty pretty good. Um, we switched out to birch because I think the nether tunnels, it'd be better to do a, a slab of birch given that this is the server is the birch church server. So I'll um, probably do that. And then I have been working on this cobblestone generator a little bit. Uh, the redstone has become a spaghetti monster. So these are falling edge detecting circuits on the side. That way it only opens the pistons for a short period of time so that the stone can reform. So if I were to, I'll well, just make cobble for a second. Go like this. You can see that it has plenty of time to reform the stone before you actually have to push it into the middle. That makes the machine a little bit faster because you have three blocks you can generate cobblestone in rather than uh, just one. So I've gotten a little bit of stone. Uh, I'm going to need a lot more than that. So we're going to get a better way to repair our picks sometime soon. Uh, I'm not sure. It's just this, the method I'm using to repair my pick right now is villager trades, which works, but it is a little bit slow. And I also don't have unbreaking, so I gotta repair far more often than I would like. Like, you know, three times as often. So I'm gonna put this there and grab some iron. We're gonna turn this off for a second so I can actually think. Then I go and I trade with each of these uh, villagers and I buy redstone from you and I buy glass from you and I put the glass away because it takes up all my inventory and I buy iron I'll buy emeralds with iron and that's about how much experience I get I also go buy bottles of enchanting but I don't usually have enough emeralds to uh, buy them all so that's what I do for a trading cycle, and then I go back to the cobble generator and chop for a little while. I might need to roll for unbreaking just to make this a little bit more efficient, but we'll see. I'm kind of sick of villager rolling if you didn't guess that. Okay, I came back from some AFK, and I have a ton of iron. So what I'm gonna do is go trade as much of it away as I can, and then I'm gonna block up the rest because I have an idea for it. Okay, now we're gonna go grab the red dye, which I have a ton of, and we'll go trade with our handy shepherd, who has been a good friend. We'll put the rest of these trading supplies away. These are pure things that I'm gonna trade. I don't have any ideas of what else to do with them. So you're unlocked to the point where I can trade. Um, let's see, which one? This guy will be easiest to unlock. All right, another glass trader, that's great. And he's got Riptide. We'll take the gla glass. And we're gonna take the redstone from you. So we bought all of your ink. Can I talk to you? I'm gonna have to fix these villagers. They are a complete nightmare. Um, do that. Buy some more lanterns. Oh, you've got, uh, you've got respiration. At least we got some way to get respiration. All right, we're gonna have to figure out a better storage solution because we're running out of space and everything's a mess. There's a lot of things on the list of stuff to do, but for now, 
We're just gonna get caught up on the chores and then I'm gonna go AFK again so I can put the little one to bed. Here we get. We're getting there with the, uh, with the obsidian. We need a lot more, um, we need a lot more stone. We need a lot more birch. Oh, and something I may not have mentioned, random tick speed was slowed down. It was at 10, now it's at 4. And I think that's a much better way to play because things were just too easy to get. I know that sounds weird to be saying, oh no, it's too easy to play, but honestly, part of Skyblock is the challenge and it was just not a challenge. Everything came too easy. It's still pretty easy to get stuff, but not as easy as it was before. We are mostly caught back up, so I'm gonna make sure that the chest gets cleared out, and then we're good to AFK again. And this did overflow, that's why I got two tridents. What happens is if a drown is uh, standing around waiting to be uh, killed, and he picks up a trident, or picks up a nautilus shell, which they prefer nautilus shells to tridents, for some reason, they will drop their trident to pick up that nautilus shell. And those tridents, when they drop them, are fully repaired and super, super easy to, uh, to work with. So, two more tridents for the collection. Let's just take these out, put two tridents in there, and fill this up even though we are pretty much completely full on uh, resources. Okay, so we started building our path to a nether tunnel. I am going to put in nether tunnels at the 2500 mark, so at minus 25, minus 2500 is going to be actually where the nether portal I use is at, because I don't need one at my base. And then we'll put some at 0, zero some at like 0, minus 2500, just so that way throughout the map, if you die and respawn, it's only a few thousand blocks, like 1,200 blocks would be the furthest you have to bridge for most people. And then eventually we can put in the 5,000, uh, zero, 5,000, 5,000, you know, those ones if we really want to. But we're going to start off with the, just the 2,500, uh, spots. So I'm building out to mine and I'm going to do a little bit more of another portal than a lot of people would do because I want it to look nice so we're doing a birch slab down the middle stone brick down the sides we'll get here I want it to line up nicely here so we'll get our obsidian out and we'll do one two three one two three one two three then we're gonna put a stone slab there place obsidian there wait I did four on that one. Mine this one out. And then we'll just put a uh, stone slab roof and then drop down. And we can light up. Now, what do I have for slabs? Let's get some more stone bricks crafted just in case I need them. And then we're going to go through the nether. This is going to be scary. It's always really laggy. And it is pretty, pretty nuts when you go in. Tune in next time to figure out if Hatter ends up in the void, if he falls to his death, if he gets eaten by a ghast, or if he just makes it to the nether, builds another tunnel, and everybody's happy. Anyway, this is Matt Hatter, and I'm out. Bye!